the first property that we're going to look at is color. Um, color, I always like going over with people. It's really like it's the most visual soil property and we have some really fun soil colors here in Vermont and soil color can tell you a couple of different things about soil health. Um, so more organic matter in soils turns them a darker color and so the first thing that I would look at when I'm trying to look at a soil profile and understand something about its health is looking for dark color in the soil surface and that's gonna show me like are there lots of roots growing that are bringing organic matter in and that organic matter is gonna do all kinds of things for the soil. Um, it's supporting a happy and healthy microbial ecosystem. It's supporting all of the larger organisms that live in soil. It's a source of nutrients and it also helps the soil infiltrate water, um, let <coughs> oxygen move around, which is really important for plant roots, all kinds of good stuff. Um, so seeing a lot of organic matter and those dark colors is a really good indicator of soil health in the surface horizon. Um, and it's a little probably hard for you guys to see from where you stand. So I'm just gonna take a shovel out and someone, Lindsay, could you grab me one of the little, do we have any more of those clear plastic cups? Yes, I had them in my hand at the beginning for this exact moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. Um, just two, I think. Ignore the label. I'll try and get. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's that right. one. Yeah, and ooh, is an organic matter color card also? Oh, I got one right here. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was gonna pull out. Um, so there are these handy dandy color cards. Um, this one is from University of Illinois Extension, um, but they have these different shades of brown on them and you can match up the soil sample that you have with your shade of brown to try and get a, an estimate of how much organic matter is in that soil. Moist, yeah, moist, yeah, the soil needs to be moist for the color card to work. Um, and we had looked at this yesterday and we thought it was about probably about a two to two and a half percent organic matter soil um, and that's I would say that that's pretty indicative of a soil that's received a lot of tillage um, so you could see higher numbers and you could see darker colors and because we're seeing this kind of lower number it's indicating like this soil we know that it's in corn um, it's probably receiving a lot of tillage we know that there's Unless they're using cover crops, there might not be like continuous perennial vegetation on that soil. It's not receiving those inputs of soil organic matter. And then the annual or more frequent tillage is also kind of churning the soil. It can cause oxidation of organic matter and overall cause that to leave the system. And all of that's being reflected back in the color that we see. Um, and then in the other soil sample that's coming around, from the lower down part of the soil profile. Um, I noticed a lot of fun colors and you can, if you come close enough to the pit to see it a little bit, um, you can see in this lower down part of the soil profile, we have a little bit more of a yellowish tone. There are a lot of like spots of red, there are spots of black, and you don't have to like become a super knowledgeable chemist and learn all about the crazy chemical cycles that those are telling us about. But basically when you see all of those different colors, it's telling you that this part of the soil profile is staying wet for some period of the year. Um, and that wetness could be caused by a lot of different things. Um, so we know that this soil is probably shallow because of the glacial history here and actually like, in the digging of this pit, here's some shale. This is the bedrock that's underneath the soil. Um, it's right here. Um, and so part of that challenge with drainage is probably having to do with this pretty shallow soil depth. There's not a lot of soil for water to drain through before it gets trapped by this impermeable rock layer at the bottom. Um, but it's also 
And those colors could be giving you clues about other sources of compaction. And so I always like to, when I see a lot of those colors in the deeper part of a soil profile, I'm asking myself, why do I think that this is happening? There's something trapping that water. Can we all give Roger a big hand of applause for... Thank you! It's beautiful! Yeah, and so asking, why is this happening? Like, is it just the way that the soil has developed over time? Or are there also some things that we could potentially control with management that would help out with that drainage? And that question is going to bring me into our next soil property, which is texture and structure. So soil texture refers to the literal size of the particles that soil is made of. Um, you've probably heard the terms sand, silt, and clay before, and those are sizes of soil particles. Um, so the biggest particles are called sand, the medium are silt, and the smallest are called clay. Um, and then structure is a related term that is telling us about how those particles fit together. Um, and thinking about a healthy soil in terms of soil structure, what I'm looking for is something that is like very crumbly, where the soil is sticking together enough to kind of create these passageways and pores in between the soil aggregates. And what those passageways and pores are doing is allowing spaces for the plant roots to grow, they're allowing spaces for soil organisms to travel, um, for the soil microbes to move around and kind of offer different environments that different microbes and different organisms need and also allowing for water infiltration and water storage. Um, soil structure is such an important property and it's something that we can definitely see within our pit. Um, and it's definitely gonna feed back to that drainage question. So there's a big difference in this pit that you can probably see between the very surface and the soils lower down. Um, and this is something that happens naturally over time. It's part of soil development for the lower parts of the soil to take on different structures than the surface, but it's also something that can be influenced by management. So up here in the surface, and if that cup of surface soil is still making its way around, that you'll notice, yeah. pass it back around. <laughs> oh, pass it back around? Pass it back around. Do you want your card to pass it with it? Uh, no. Unless anyone really wants to get good at their organic oh, wait, matter. That's the lower one. Pass the other one around too. We'll see them this all. This is the uh, upper level. My, my apologies. No worries. Um, so what, and you can kind of, if you want to take a little bit and put it in your hand, save enough for everyone else. Um, what I'm feeling in this soil is it's kind of fluffy. There's not a ton. It's like sticking together a little bit but not a lot. Um, so in general, there's not a ton of structure that's really formed in this soil. So this is something that's pretty indicative, again, of soils that are receiving this annual tillage. It takes a while for soil structure to develop. Um, basically what happens is in the surface soil, plant roots are going to exude a lot of sugars those sugars are going to call in a lot of microbial life and those microbes also exude their own sugars and all of that kind of glues together the soil particles. And when we either don't have a lot of plant roots or are interrupting that kind of gluing process a lot through tillage and oxidizing organic matter by exposing it to the air, it's gonna interrupt that process, which we call aggregation. And that's kind of, what it looks like is going on in here and again we're looking at the soil right under corn and Lindsay do you remember how long this has been in corn? That is our continuous corn plot so I would say for over 10 years. Yeah so that's about what I would expect to see. No manure so it's just getting synthetic fertilizer um, once twice a year. Yeah now and I, th I think that also makes a lot of sense. Now, if sugars impact the microbial life, and if you've got a weaker soil, we'd incorporate a little sugar into the soil to increase the boost the microbial life out. 
Yeah, I wouldn't feed them like table sugar. Uh, no, they have no, their it's own like sugars the worst. that they like, but sugar in the form of organic matter. Um, and so like a well composted manure, compost, um, you know, kind of always doing that in line with your soil testing because we also have to think about the nutrient aspect and making sure that there's not too many nutrients getting into the soil. Um, and then also sugars can come in just through continuous plant coverage. Um, so making sure that there's living roots all the time in the soil and those living roots are going to exude the sugars and they're the sugars that the soil microbes have kind of evolved to be interested in. And so I feel like plants are, are the ultimate sugar provider because they have co-evolved with organisms in the soil so over a long time. basically native plants that are high producing sugar for the soil in your native area would, would probably be decomposing to add the best sugars for those most microbial life. I would think so. I know that there's been a lot of research about how like native ecotype plants like seem to do best in that native environment and I'm not sure about like their specific co-evolution with specific regional soil microbes. I feel like there's a lot of interesting research going on about that so I don't totally know but I would guess. And yeah. This is a good time for me to tell you this like little stat. It's also in your book you have, like a little like critter creature um, handout that's in your um, field day book but one thing is like around the rhizosphere there's 1,000 to 2,000 more microbes and then the rest of the soil so there is like your roots are the base of the food web that gives the food to the microbes and it just keeps on going up and of course they're also cycling the nutrients which then helps the plant grow as well so one of the catch-all like I can say catch-all but like they <coughs> added might be like the more diversity you have above ground, the more diversity you have below ground, because it's creating that habitat and that food <coughs> for these microbes. Yes, and if we had maybe a little bit more of that habitat and food source, what I would expect to see here would be darker colors and potentially deeper darker colors and a little bit more of that strong crumbly aggregation. Um, and then something that I noticed in this pit when we were checking it out yesterday is that there seems to be a little layer in the surface soil where the soil is making a structure that looks like this. Um, so this is something that we call platy structure. It's anytime the soil aggregates are wider than they are tall. And this is usually a structure that's indicative of some kind of compaction and so I was a little bit thrown off when I saw these plates yesterday because oftentimes where you see platy structure is right underneath where the plow is going um, and that makes sense if you think about it it's like digging down digging down to the same depth and if you're plowing year after year it's gonna squish down the soil underneath that um, this is a little bit higher in the profile than I would expect to see this, but we were talking about this potentially being a result of like tires driving over the soil a lot over time. Um, we're kind of, we dug this pit right in the aisle, so it's potentially getting a lot of vehicle traffic that could be causing this compaction. Um, and so that kind of feeds back into these colors that we're seeing lower down in the soil also that also shallow tillage, yeah, and I feel like we've talked about like disking pans <laughs> before, um, you know, all kinds of, tillage of all kinds does influence soils, and so being mindful about when and how much you till, um, both in terms of like frequency and intensity, and if you're seeing these kinds of platy structures develop in your soil, that could be a sign that might want to think about and maybe alter the way that tillage is being utilized um, just because it is often a factor in this kind of compaction that we see. Would that mean that it would be time to do some deeper tillage? So that is when, I think that's really where like looking at the whole profile can be helpful to you. Um, the soil development, I think, can really be in conversation with thinking about management. Um, and so in a, in a shallow soil like this, I'm not sure if I would recommend deeper tillage as a way to remedy that because we also are seeing a lot of like 
wetness and you know very shallow bedrock and so I'm not totally certain that deeper tillage would necessarily help amend that um, and, and particularly in soils that have really compacted subsurface layers um, like down here or lower sometimes that can happen naturally and when you have those situations naturally you're not going to fix it with deep tillage um, I know that there's there's a lot of interest lately in doing like the rip sower and deep ripping and that can definitely like when you have a serious plow pan that's developed that can definitely be like a step one to helping that situation out um, but then really thinking about like I like to think about what are some of the biological solutions and like holistic ways to after you've potentially done that deep tillage um, really support the aggregation and drainage and infiltration by building up that biological capacity of the soil to like form its own aggregates and maintain that structure on its own. Well, and then knowing the thickness of your compaction layer is very important as well as, as where it is and how thick it is because if it's thin essentially kind of like what you showed us there tillage wouldn't always necessarily be the right choice either because you, you're may be able to plant something in there and get the biology and get some roots and actually break that up rather than some tillage. So when we're using like a penetrometer, it's important to be able to kind of know how deep the compaction goes and not just where it is at that point to kind of give you a sense of what, because not all of us want to go out and dig a pit in our, in our field to figure out how deep it is. What? Yeah, well, yeah. What? Yeah, and you know, that was something I was going to bring up at some point in this demo is you don't always have to dig a pit this, this deep. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of like getting out your shovel and digging a little bit just to kind of look and see like what are the colors, what are the structures. Um, and then I know we have less time than planned, so I'll try and wrap this up. Um, the last thing that I want to point out in this pit that we can really see well from soil pits is the biology. Um, so I've definitely talked a lot already about biology being kind of the basis for all of this. Um, it's both a driver of soil health, biology helps build soil health, but it can also be an indicator of soil health. Um, and so one thing I really like to look for is the plant roots and see how deep are they getting into this profile and where are they growing, what are they looking like. Um, and so you can see a fair amount of roots mostly contained to I would say like the top three inches there are some roots that are able to get below that but most of the roots here seem to be contained to this area that's above that little compaction layer and so that's telling us that potentially this compaction that's developed is causing a constraint for the plant roots and if they were able to get deeper than that and below that we might be seeing a little bit more of that surface darkness and, and that those healthier structures in the surface soil. Um, you can also take a look around for things like earthworms, other insects, um, arthropods, all sorts of things living in the soil. And just sometimes it's nice to just look at the pit and see like what's crawling around. Maybe I'm seeing some ants. That that's also indicative of this variety of corn. You know it's, what I mean? Like if we put in switchgrass or something, those roots would be in that soil. They'd be down in the water, I think, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's like a, that's a really good point about, again, like how management decisions are going to be affecting what you see in the profile. Um, and so, yeah, it can definitely be both compaction and also just that like this is an annual system that's growing corn and maybe thinking about... Um, you know, what are the deeper rooted varieties that you can grow that are going to get those roots down there, um, be building some of those structures, be bringing in a little bit more of that organic matter. Um, and so it really is a conversation of like what is happening naturally with soil development in this profile and then what's under your control in terms of management and then like how is what you're seeing in the soil maybe guiding you to, to think about some of those choices going into the future.